remind you of anyone? Merp, merp, merp. Dear Tim and Moby, the world map in our classroom looks way different from the one in our textbook. What's the deal, and which one's right? Thanks, Ms. Beatty's class. Well, actually, neither one's entirely right. The Earth's surface is curved. To recreate it on a flat piece of paper, you have to change it a little bit. So, no map can represent all of Earth's features with total accuracy. Take this orange. Just like the Earth, it's a spheroid. That means it's almost perfectly round, but not quite. Now, check this out. We can peel off the skin, but it won't lie flat. I could tear it here and here so it flattens a bit better, but look how the parts of your face end up in the wrong spots. No matter how I do it, I'll end up with certain things wrong or out of place. Features might be the wrong size, or shapes might get distorted, or the distance or direction between things is off. The same thing happens when you transform a 3D globe into a 2D map. Happens when you transform a 3D globe into a 2D map. Well, pulling out a globe every time you needed directions wouldn't be very practical. They're kind of tough to carry around. Plus, you'd have to have a really big globe in order to see any kind of local detail. So cartographers, people who make maps, have to find imperfect solutions. They create map projections, transferring locations from Earth onto a flat surface. Well, imagine you had a globe with a light bulb inside, and all the continents cut out. If you put a big piece of paper next to it, the light would project the land masses onto it. You could touch it to a single point on the globe and get this planar projection. Or this one, create a cone around the globe and get this conic projection. Wrap it into a cylinder and end up with a cylindrical projection. And so on. Whatever position you pick will distort the land in different ways. The map we're most familiar with is a cylindrical projection created way back in the 16th century. Gerardus Mercator, a European cartographer, wanted to improve the maps used on ships. The most popular ones at the time distorted direction, so your destination on the map might look like it's directly north of you, when in reality it's north and a little west. To stay on course, navigators had to keep resetting their compass angle. But on the Mercator projection, direction is 100% accurate. Navigators could measure the heading between any two points, and that's the angle they'd follow on their compass for the whole journey. <laughs> well, Mercator had to mess with certain elements on the globe to make his map work. He distorted its shape to fill a rectangular space. On a globe, the lines of longitude meet at the poles. Mercator straightened these out, making the lines parallel which meant he had to stretch out any features between them, too. The result was a map covered in a grid of squares. Next, Mercator adjusted the lines of latitude, running east-west. He spread them apart to the same degree as the lines of longitude. The farther lines were from the equator, the more they got spread out. Mercator didn't do any of this work physically, like we're showing here. It required a ton of complicated math to make a map with perfect direction. Well, I didn't say it was perfect. On Mercator's map, places near the poles look much larger than they really are. That's why Greenland seems to be about the same size as Africa. But you can see on the globe that Africa is more than ten times bigger. Mercator's map was an incredibly useful tool for navigating the seas, and you still can't beat it for accurate directions. A 90 degree turn on a street is a 90 degree turn on a Mercator map, but for learning geography it's, it's not ideal. For that, you might be better off with a compromise projection. These distort all four aspects, area, distance, direction, and shape, but just a bit. So it looks decent, and it's a good choice for visualizing global themes or landmarks, like comparing the biggest cities, or sorting nations by type of government. Equal area projections preserve size. Every square inch represents the same area of land or water. So these kinds of maps are great for showing things like population density. The trade-off is the shapes of land masses end up very distorted. Interrupted projections keep size and shape pretty accurate, except where the map gets cut off, like in the oceans here. 
Plus, it's tough to measure distance and direction between different sections. Well, like I said, there is no perfect projection. They all contain some amount of distortion, which can distort how we understand the world. We've already seen how one projection makes Africa look smaller than it really is. How might that affect our ideas about the place? Even on maps with more accurate sizing, Western Europe is often on top and centered. That's not reality. It's a choice made by Western cartographers. If we lived in China, the same projection might look like this. And if our preferred maps had been made by people who lived south of the equator, this is how we'd probably think of our world. Uh, my name's Tim. I know everything. Okay, okay, I get it. Everyone listen to me while I tell you about stuff. 